Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. We have the old Sony KV1222RS on the bench right now. This is a TV that I looked at previously, and it has the purity problems in the corner here, where the color is a little messed up right here. When I posted this video about this TV, lots and lots and lots of people suggested that I could fix this TV with a degaussing coil. I don't actually have a real degaussing coil, although I do have this bulk tape eraser, which is sort of a de degaussing coil, but it's not the one that CRT people typically use to degauss the sets they're working on. As a little background, degaussing is the term for trying to remove a magnetic field from something or a magnetism from something. So if you have a disc or a tape and you want to degauss it, when you do that, it resets the magnetic field that's on the media, which has the effect of erasing it. Which is what happens when you take these bulk erasers here and you put it near a tape or a disc and you plug it in and pull the trigger here, it erases it. Now I did try to use this on the CRT, didn't really have any effect on the purity problem and it had a big effect on the screen. In fact, why don't I just plug this in, give a demonstration. I've gotten a bit closer with the camera and I turned off the studio light just so you can see a little better what happens when I pull the trigger and I put this near the CRT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it away from the screen, I'm going to pull the trigger, and then I'm going to go close to the CRT. And you notice all that that's happening? That's the magnetic field from the eraser or the degausser affecting the screen. Now when I pull it away, you notice that the color purity problem still persists. Actually, let me back up a little bit and let's talk about what these purity issues are. So with a color CRT like this, there are three electron beams, red, green, and blue. They're in the back of the TV in the neck on the CRT. And they shoot electron beams toward the front of the screen here, which has phosphor coated in, of course, red, green, and blue phosphors. And the electron beams are arranged in a trinitron, I think horizontally, one next to each other. And in the front of the screen, there's something called an aperture grill, where there are these fine lines that run down the front of the screen behind the different phosphor coatings. As the electrons from the electron beams fly towards the front of the CRT, the aperture grill basically blocks the wrong electron flow from getting to the wrong phosphor. Okay, that didn't make much sense. Let me try to explain it a different way. Imagine on the back of the CRT, the red electron beam. It can only hit the red phosphor on the front of the screen. So the aperture grill has the effect of basically shadowing the other two electron beams from the red phosphor, so that the red phosphor is lit up only from the red electron beam. Now, if you have magnetism in the front of the CRT or anywhere in the CRT, it can bend and curve the electron beams. So when they get towards the aperture grill on the front here, they may end up hitting the wrong colors, which is why when I took this eraser and I turned it on, it has this dramatic effect going on because it's actually causing the beams to curve as they get close to the phosphor and then that hits the wrong colors. But on this TV, for whatever reason, the red beam is turning green in this one little spot down here and a little bit is happening here with the blue. So something is happening to either curve the electrons as they get close to the phosphor here so that they hit the wrong phosphors on the front or the aperture grill itself is potentially warped or something like that so that it's just in the wrong position as the red electron beam comes through to hit the phosphor. But because of the magnetism can affect color so dramatically on color TVs, they always have something like this, a degaussing coil built in. And there's a coil that's around the front of the CRT here. And when you first turn it on, especially on Sony TVs, you hear this, bzz, this buzz sound that is the degaussing coil being energized from mains, so at 60 hertz here in the US, 120 volts, 60 hertz. And that has the effect, if you could energize that while the picture was visible, you don't normally see it because of course, the picture is not there yet because the CRT is still warming up. But if it were warmed up and then you do degauss, you would see the whole picture shimmy with the colors and everything. I know this CRT is working, the degaussing works on this because I can hear it running, but also, uh, it draws quite a lot of current when you first turn on the TV as that degaussing happens, which is completely normal. There's a thermistor 
in a TV like this. So the coil energizes for a second and then very quickly de-energizes. Anyhow, so this thing obviously has an effect, but I've done a lot of fooling around in the corner here and I haven't been able to have any effect whatsoever. So that brings me to this. This comes from patron Charles in North Carolina. As you can see, he wrote right on the side of the box what this is. He has gone ahead and sent me a degaussing coil, one of the ones that are designed specifically for use on televisions. So let's do a quick unboxing, take a look at what's in here. I think there's a couple other little goodies and then give a test to the degaussing coil. Okay, well packed, Charles, thank you. Okay, so right here, this is the degaussing coil itself. Hopefully the camera focuses on it and not the things behind it. AC mains input says right here, normal degaussing time, approximately 10 seconds, max one minute on. That's right, because this is a coil inside here and it's being energized by mains. It will get hot and there's probably a thermal switch, I hope. Oh, and there's actually a button right here that you hold down to turn it on. Picture tube degausser, it says right there. All right, let's see what else is in here. Okay, and this bag looks like a little selection of 30 pin and a little bit of 72 pin memory. Although, I think he mentioned to me that these were probably memory modules for Macintoshes, which is could be useful. I think I'm maxed out, but you never know when I'll need an extra module. But things like the Color Classic, I think uses these types of modules. And then here, 72 pin memory as well. So cool, thanks very much for that, Charles. And here are some vials of glow in the dark powder. It says glow powder, purple. And this one says aqua. And this one here, it doesn't say anything, but I assume that is green. Let me see if I can turn off the light and we can see any kind of glowing happening here. All right, there we go. Oh, it's not really coming across because it's not dark enough in here, but the green one is really glowing. Oh, there you go, you can kind of see it there. Very cool. And I think these types of things you can mix into epoxy and create glow in the dark things with that. Big Clive had a video on these. I remember uh, watching it. You can get these powder from eBay or whatnot, I think, and make some really cool glow in the dark stuff with those. Awesome. All right, next up we have these, the packages here. There's two, actually three of them. I've opened this one a little bit. I would wager that these are lots and lots of EEPROMs, which are very useful to me always. These are 27C020-15s from Cisco devices. And I have to say, I'm actually not really familiar with these, this particular type of EEPROM. These must be larger, like 2048 kilobit, maybe, something like that. Peeled off the sticker on one of these, relatively large die. Judging by these other packages, it looks like a whole bunch of these. So very cool. Could allow for many, many different ROMs or kernels to be installed into a PC or Commodore 64. You could have 30 different ROMs. I'm, I just made that number up, I don't actually know. <laughs> and last but not least, looks like we have a little bit of candy going on here, quite a bit. Whoa, okay, what's this, Zots? Fizz powder candy, 100 count, seven assorted flavors. Have I ever tried this stuff? Charles mentioned in the message to me that this stuff is relatively old. Like it's candy, well not, this is not actually old candy, but this candy came out in the 50s. Looks like it came from Amazon originally. Let's take a look inside here. Yes, okay, I have definitely tried these before. So I think it's like a hard candy inside. Let's open one of these up. And when you put this in your mouth, so it looks like a normal lozenge kind of thing. You put this in your mouth and it really fizzes up and makes a really funny feeling um, in, your, in your mouth. Let me just try one of these. So there's some kind of a fizzy something in the center and you see it's sort of bubbling out on the side. So the outside doesn't fizz, but once you kind of get down to the center, it really fizzes up and you can feel it sort of fizzy in your mouth. I've had definitely had these before, they're pretty cool. Oh, it's fizzing out of both ends, actually. Yeah, the center part is filled with some fizzy material. And this is definitely a lot of it here, Charles, but <laughs> very cool. Thank you very much. Let me finish this watermelon flavor. Okay, so let's see about this degausser here. I've moved the TV so it's sort of hanging off the edge of the bench. Notice I can get my hand under the front corner here. So that way I can try to get the degausser under there. I assume 
potentially there's something that's causing this. If it's not the shadow mask, or sorry, shadow mask, the aperture grill, then it is something that's in this corner that could be affecting it. Although, by the way, inside the TV, I've taken a look, there's no speaker or anything over here. The speaker on this TV is actually on the top, is not here. And this is just plastic here. The only thing that's metallic besides the band that runs around the CRT and the screw that holds the CRT in is the headphone jack, which is right here. But in this area, otherwise, there is nothing. So first, let's uh, try this out. See when I push the button, what happens here? Okay, it's definitely working. So I guess I'm just gonna try to massage this corner to try to get that out. So notice the effect is very similar to the bulk tape eraser. And also really doesn't seem to be having much of an effect. Notice here, like the green bar that runs along the bottom should be all the way across, but right here it is actually warped by something. And that's why I think that the aperture grill is what's actually damaged on this CRT. And really, I don't think this is having any effect. Is this thing warming up? Not totally. I can tell that this is less powerful than the bulk tape eraser I have, which definitely produces a much more dramatic effect on the picture than this thing does. I mean, if I hold this right close, of course it has some kind of an effect, but unfortunately it just has no effect. Oops, door flip down has no effect there. I can definitely feel that it's warming up now using it. So, well, um, if anyone has any tips for how to try to massage this out, let me know. But you've seen here that with the bulk tape eraser and the one that Charles sent me here, there's really no real effect. Now I have something else interesting that I figured out about this. Okay, so what I have here, uh, if I can get this in focus, two neodymium magnets, little ones. One's a bar one, and one is a little circle. And I wanna see something interesting? If I take this bar one, and I stick this around here. Notice the green is worse, but if I rotate it and I put it here, look at that, it's gone. The, the, the problem, the purity problem is completely gone. And then this little round one here, same thing. Um, the weird thing is I have to sort of put it not on the, the bezel of the TV, but actually sort of like hovering over the front and they're just the right spot. And if I do it like right there, basically that makes the problem go away entirely, completely go away. I figure it might be possible to take the CRT out and install this bar magnet actually behind the plastic here. And maybe that would work, but I'm not quite sure what to do about this little round one because it doesn't seem to work properly anywhere around here. It has to be really close to the front of the glass. I'm not quite sure about that, but you can see the purity problems are 100% resolved just by putting these little magnets locally right here. Now, a couple other things. People have suggested that perhaps there were some magnets inside the TV here, like around the deflection yoke that have fallen off and they're causing this problem, or some other alignment magnets that are near the deflection yoke that have fallen off. Personally, I don't think that's possible that that could affect this. And the reason why is changes you do to the deflection yoke do affect things in the corner, but it generally affects convergence. If you put the little metallic strips under the deflection yoke and moving the deflection yoke backwards and forwards on the neck of the CRT, so the CRT goes through the deflection yoke and you slide it back and forward, it does affect purity, but it affects it in like large areas. Because if you think about it, the electron beams are far back at that point. So any changes you make there are gonna cause divergence and things to happen over a much larger part of the screen. Not a little tiny thing here and a little tiny thing in the corner. It has a much more dramatic effect on the overall purity of the CRT. And that's why I think that it's a localized problem in the corner here. And if it's something that became magnetized like a screw or the band around the CRT or something in this area, then using the degaussing coil here on it, 
or my bulk eraser should demagnetize those things. That's what this does. That's exactly what this does. It's supposed to cancel out the magnetic fields. Clearly that's not happening. Let's just try this now with these magnets stuck here. Notice now the green all the way across looks a lot more uniform, which is what I would expect. In fact, if I put it near the top, it's kind of what's happening. And that's with these magnets here. But of course, if I take those away, the purity problem comes right back. So there's that one and this bar magnet here. There it is. Problem is back exactly like it was before. So yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, if anyone has any tips on using this, please let me know. But I think I've pretty much exhausted all the possibilities of trying to fix this externally. And I think I'm just down to trying to use these magnets and disassemble this CRT and try to place them. Problem is this is a live chassis CRT. So I, had, I could use the uh, isolation transformer, but it means that it could get shocked working inside of here. I mean, more than you might already get shocked working inside a CRT. Of course, it's always that risk. But anyways, um, so I'd have to do this while the thing is running. And I don't know what kind of access I have to put magnets in that area there. Like there might be plastic in the way, things like that, where, you know, I might have to put it in a very specific place to fix this issue. So anyhow, there we go. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs up would be appreciated. Of course, uh, second channel video, I'd appreciate it. Subscribe to this channel. And of course, check out my main channel if you haven't already. Thanks to my patrons and of course, my patron Charles for sending in this candy and the EPROMs and this cool degaussing coil. I, I really do appreciate it. And that is going to be it. Stay healthy, stay safe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.